Well, hello there. It's Christmas week all over the world. And I hope each one of you are safe and happy and loved. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. And this is our Christmas edition. Uh, nothing outrageously special except for the anomalies, which are unusual this week, as they are every week. Are there any usual ones? Uh, but we're going to dive into those in just a minute. But uh, we have a few changes coming up in the new year, which uh, you will see and uh, we'll talk about. Nothing terrible. And uh, hopefully it'll improve the, uh, the look and uh, maybe even the cash flow on this channel so I can continue to do this. But uh, enough of that. Merry Christmas to each one of you. And let's dive into what we have this week. Let's start out today with some anomalies from Alan Walker's Disclosure Exposure Process on Percy 64 and 65. There's nothing I can do about those stitching bars, so you just need to ignore them for a moment as we check out the object of interest in the lower right. And by the way, these are files Alan shared with me, so there's no citation link. Sorry about that. This is a rare exception to my steadfast rule of cite your work. This has so much structure and symmetry to it that I really want to get a bit closer for a look. The symmetrical trapezoidal shape and the surface markings are what grab my attention. Whether those are carvings, mechanical traces, or something else, we can only speculate. But what also seems important is that cutout inside the circle. That really doesn't seem to be erosion, but more like a purposeful shape that might have had something to do with this thing's function back in the day. But there's more to look at in this one. There seem to be two possible capstone candidates, one on the ridge and one up front. Let me circle them for you in case you're not picking them out. That's some really unusual symmetry there, but as you know, we've found scores of pyramids and capstones on Mars in the past. Let's move in on the one in the back. The darker portion facing us is a rigidly perfect triangle. The lighter right side tilts away from us and seems to have a rim along the back side as well as a, a knob or shape in the center. The one in front shows some wear and tear, but it retains its perfect shape. In ancient Egypt, these capstones were called Pyramidions, and if they had blessings carved on the four faces, they were called Benben stones. There are many different examples of Pyramidions and Benben stones in various museums around the world, and one day there will be an amazing archaeological museum on Mars that will be a must see for anyone visiting the Red Planet. I'll have to be reborn to see it, but I know in my bones it'll be there. Here's a shot from the next day, Sol 65, and we've got that object inside the green target to look at. We've found any number of artifacts on Mars that seem to have blackened screens, you know, like a, a computer monitor when it's turned off. Is this another one? It's possible that there's a shelf of rock extending from the surface and casting a square shadow, in which case this is no big deal and everyone just move on. But then there's that symmetrical shape of the whole object, those lines on the left and the fact that the screen or shadow is dead center. 
That's an interesting combination of circumstances that point to artificiality. There's just not enough resolution here to make a clear call. Too bad. This is an interesting one from my friend Jim West and Curiosities ChemCam. I'm reminded of an animal's maw, a gaping mouth full of teeth. Although in this case, the teeth look kind of busted up. In any case, whatever this is appears to be hollow with a number of appendages arranged where teeth would be. But I don't think it's organic. The interesting markings, the strange and fairly symmetrical shape, and the fact that it's hollow certainly leaves an impression that this is not natural. But what exactly is it? Unidentified, that's what it is. Isn't this lovely? This is the garbage that NASA hands us on a regular basis. That screen door effect may have a scientific or technical reason behind it, but it's pretty irritating, don't you think? Raymond Glassford is a researcher in Arizona who often shares his finds with me. This one in particular grabbed my attention. Let's open the screen door and clean this thing up a bit. That's better. Raymond pointed out the object in back and said it reminded him of an Egyptian cartouche. And I like that strange bit of business down in front, so let's start with that. Is this just erosion? Well, it certainly could be. But I was intrigued by the different shapes and how far they stick out from the main body of the rock, if that's what it is. Let's move on. When we look a little closer at Raymond's cartouche, we see that instead of it being carving on the surface of a rock, it appears to be tubing coming out of a larger tube. The whole thing seems mechanical or maybe even hydraulic in nature. I can't help wondering sometimes if NASA does the screen door thing on purpose whenever anomalies are too close to the rover. Here again, how hard would it be to use the telephoto lens to zoom in on this object? I've given up hoping they'll ever take the time to drive the rover closer in to examine something. Of course, they, they probably do. and. They likely have a wonderful file full of high-res anomalies that the unwashed masses will never see. I guess that's just job security for me, isn't it? San Kotvix shared this one just the other day, fresh from Neville Thompson's GMAC of 3288, and as usual, the anomaly is smack on the edge of the image over there on the lower left. I'm a lifelong pilot, and I know a wing when I see a wing. Check out the perfect shape of the airfoil, the right angles, the sweeping curve from top right to bottom left, as if it was mounted against the body of an aircraft. Given the shape and orientation, I would say this is part of a canard wing that was mounted on the left forward section of the aircraft near the nose. There even appears to be honeycomb structure within the wing, identical to many of the composite wings we create here on Earth. And notice the debris lying around it. It's not too big a stretch to imagine at least some of those parts being part of a wrecked airplane. Rami posted this the other day and I was able to find it in the analyst's notebook and do my own processing of the data. As you can see, we're close in to the rover 
with the object of interest in the upper right. So, we have what might possibly be a step pyramid, but the problem is it's only a foot or so tall. Now that doesn't mean it isn't artificial, so let's do a quick inventory. The classic truncated pyramid shape faces us, and it appears to be covered with deeply etched figures, not the least of which are a series of three glyphs going right up the middle. To the left appear to be steps with plenty of regular symmetry and more than a few right angles. It's difficult to tell if the front and the side are all one piece or if the front is lying up against the portion with steps and that they are actually separate from one another. Regardless, this is another fascinating find by an elite researcher. I'm going to show you something cool in just a moment. But while I was checking out San Kotvik's find on Percy 265, I ran across a couple of nice cubes just sitting in the sand. Jezero Crater is chock full of building blocks and other structural components, so much so that I'm almost reluctant to point these out. But maybe some of you haven't become a calloused sophisticate like me, so let's take a closer look. Obviously, they are a, a bit worse for the wear. Global cataclysms seem to have that effect on things. But they are definite cubes that could have been part of a wall or structure at one time. Enough of that. Take a look at this next one. This one just jumps out of the background. It's pretty hard to ignore. So let's move in. What are we supposed to make of this? A round pillar with a peculiar bend, a triangular base on the left, and a, a big notch carved out of it on the right. And you've certainly noticed this by now. A perfect letter A carved into the base. You know, this is what gets me. Why are Arabic letters and numerals, the ones we use here on Earth in the Western world, why are they showing up on Mars? We find numbers and letters quite frequently on Mars that really shouldn't be there at all. That's a real puzzler, and it does beg the question, did our system of writing originate on Mars, or did we take it there in the distant past? Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending a few minutes with me. And once again, warm hugs and blessings to all of you, each one of you, who have taken the time to watch this video. And especially to all you proud weirdos, you know who you are. Please consider picking up a copy of Martian archaeology. It'll certainly help the channel out a bit and maybe make both of our Christmases a little brighter. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. Be well.